WWE is making a huge announcement. Another former WWE star is debuted in TNA. We're going to talk about all that plus so much more right here on the Ango Show. Oh, 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 yes. Welcome back to TAS. Of course, I'm your boy Ango. Don't forget, we got that 100K giveaway. Click subscribe now. Guys, we're going to kick things off with Tama Tonga. He's officially said goodbye to New Japan Pro Wrestling. He dropped the Never Open Weight Championship belt to Evil. This was expected, but now the question remains, where will he go next? Now, I just kind of want to talk about this briefly because I think it's really important to establish that AEW and WWE and TNA are all very active within the free agent market. All three companies could very well be a good destination for Tamatunga, but it's going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out, largely due to the fact that WWE and AEW, their rosters are bloated, and you know I think they have a lot of stuff going on as it is. I think adding more doesn't necessarily help. I mean, it could, but I don't think it necessarily does. Uh, but obviously, Tama Tonga is somebody that WWE has had a lot of interest on, and uh, he's always chosen NJPW. And then you got to factor in AEW allows people to get paid a lot of money but they don't have to work as much as you do in the WWE. And I think this is one of those things where I think every company really has a good chance of bringing him in. I've seen some people on Twitter talk about how potentially Tama Tonga could be a coach for WWE. And while I understand why people say that, I think Tama Tonga could be a really good coach in WWE. But at the same time, too, I do think he is a very good athlete and a very good wrestler. And I think he still can be a wrestler. So I don't think the coaching thing is something that he necessarily needs to do. I think we're a long ways away from that. But obviously, people are kind of, you know, chit chatting about that. Um, I guess anything's really a possibility. Now, me personally, you know, just from a fan's perspective, I think, uh, you know, I'm looking at the tag team division across WWE, AEW, and TNA, and all three companies are actually on the rebound with tag team wrestling. So I'm going to just kind of throw this out there from my own personal belief, right? Forget about creative, forget about previous things, you know, whatever it may be, uh, perspective. From my perspective, I would just like to see Gorillas of Destiny on AEW, TNA, or WWE television. I think that would be more ideal from a fan's perspective. I always love that tag team. I would love to see them join up together on North American television, weekly television, and it would be great. So, uh, yeah, Tama Tonga said peace out to New Japan Pro Wrestling. Obviously, a lot of great things for him in that company. They truly loved him, and uh, he killed it there, man. So kind of shocked that he's leaving. Definitely excited to see where he goes next, and obviously I'll keep you guys updated. Uh, just another quick update on Naomi. Since there's a lot of conflicting reports on Naomi, Trinity Fatu officially said goodbye to TNA at the tapings as well. Not necessarily shocking, but there's been a lot of conflicting reports as to whether or not she will be in the Royal Rumble. I think it's definitely a big possibility that she's in the Royal Rumble. I think it's very true that she is going back to WWE. I think Trinity Fatu and TNA was a great mixture, and it kind of sucks to see her leave considering how great her run is now that TNA has revamped and, you know, rebranded themselves again. And, you know, honestly, I'm excited about that for TNA. Uh, but also at the same time, too, I, I'm, I'm a little, you know, I'm a little upset because of the fact that Trinity Fatu was so great in TNA and then she's going to go back into WWE. And I don't know what to expect from her in WWE. You know what I mean? And I feel like WWE has to get it right with her. Um, but ultimately, yeah, she said goodbye to the audience and it was a very passionate speech and it was very nice. And, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm glad that she went there, bro. Honestly, I'm really, really glad that she went to TNA because she could have gone to AEW and just been another person on the roster, unfortunately, but she was really booked as the queen of the knockouts division. And a lot of credit needs to go to her and TNA for that. Um, definitely some great stuff there. Uh, I, I'm excited to see what WWE does with her, but I really hope that they make her a big deal. I don't want to see them go this route of where she's just another wrestler on WWE's roster because I, I feel like she's so much better than that. And I think WWE not retaining Sasha Banks and Naomi was a big mistake. And unfortunately, the new regime had to pay for they had to pay the cost. Ultimately, you know, Vince McMahon and that regime just wasn't good at keeping talent and keeping talent happening. And it just looks like morale right now is so much better. So it is what it is. But obviously, I can never blame her for going to WWE. A lot of money, a lot of potential possibilities, plus her husband's there. 
I kind of want to see her join the bloodline, but that's just my personal opinion. We'll see what they do on TV. Guys, I want to turn our attention. This is a spoiler, so if you guys don't like spoilers, if you guys don't want to be spoiled, I've given you enough time to speed up this video to the next timestamp. Uh, but we're going to talk about this right here, right now, because a former WWE superstar has debuted on TNA Impact, and it is nobody other than Simon Gotch. Well, he goes by the name Simon Grimm, but uh, spoiler alert, at the TNA tapings in Orlando, Florida, he attacked Josh Alexander. And I'm very curious to see what happens here, and there's a very big reason for this. My OG NXT viewers know this, uh, but the VOD villains, right? The VOD villains was a big hit in NXT. Aiden English currently does commentary for TNA, and he is taking bookings as a VOD villains tag team. So Simon Grimm getting involved in TNA is not necessarily shocking. We talk about this tag team division. All three companies have a tag team division that's currently on the rebound. I know Simon Grimm attacked Josh Alexander, but I'm curious to see if potentially they go into this idea of maybe Aiden English stepping away from commentary and becoming a wrestler again for TNA. There would be a lot of great matchups, but listen, if you like Simon Grimm, if you don't like Simon Grimm, you know, if you don't like Simon Gotch, uh, let me just say this. In terms of in-ring, him and Josh Alexander will probably slap. That will probably be a very good match. But, uh, yeah, he, he showed up on TNA. It looks like they're bringing him in. Um, and, again, you know, TNA just continues to beef out their roster with veterans and, and, and also up-and-comers. And we'll see what happens, man. I think this will be a match that a lot of people are shocked by. But uh, I want to see the VOD villains back. That's me personally. I just want to see the VOD villains, especially with the TNA tag team division and the way it is. It would be great. Not that Aiden English is a bad commentator. I think he's a hell of a commentator, and I think he's a great commentator in TNA. Uh, but I just feel like he could do so much more. So if you bring them back together, that would be really fun. We'll see if that happens. All right, guys. WrestleVotes put out a very big tweet yesterday that got everybody talking. Seth Rollins will discover. Discover. He will disclose his future uh, as WWE World Heavyweight Champion on Monday Night Raw. Later on, Fightful Select reported that he did have a partial tear in his MCL and I believe meniscus. Um, this is the same injury that Seth Rollins had going into WrestleMania. I want to say it was like WrestleMania, what, five or six years ago, whenever he went up against Triple H, he wasn't expected to make it. Uh, and then he was able to come back and have that match. Uh, that's kind of like the same situation here. Nobody really knows if Seth Rollins is, is going to be vacating the belt. Nobody knows if they're going to cash in on Seth Rollins and then he'll take time off. Nobody knows if he's going to have surgery. Nobody knows if he's 100% missing WrestleMania or not. Um, knowing Seth Rollins and just kind of what we've seen based on him before in WWE, this is his moment. This is his big WrestleMania match. And I would not be against the idea of Seth Rollins vacating the belt but winning it back at WrestleMania. And in fact, I, I want to give a lot of props to Cornell Gunter. Uh, who tweeted this out, but it was something along the lines of, you know, CM Punk holding the belt before WrestleMania. And then it kind of causes Seth Rollins to turn heel because it could have been anybody who won the World Heavyweight Championship with Seth being gone, but it just happened to be CM Punk. And I just think that's a massively great storyline because Seth Rollins heel is a great, it's a great thing, right? Like this could be a good switch up for him. And it would make logical sense. Like anybody could have won the world championship, but it had to be CM Punk that did. And that should really bother Seth Rollins. Um, and if he's able to make it back by WrestleMania, but he can't work Elimination Chamber, you can do a lot of stuff. You can make the men's Royal Rumble match for the World Heavyweight Championship. You could do that. You could do the Elimination Chamber. Or you could do a cash in where it's Damian Priest, you know, cashes in on Seth Rollins, takes advantage of it. Drew McIntyre, you know, uh, gets involved and there's just a lot of ways to go about this. It could be really unique, but uh, we're going to have a very good idea as to what's happening with the world heavyweight championship on Monday and uh, you know, best of luck to Seth Rollins. Hopefully he heals up soon. WrestleMania season is upon us guys and it's going to be a big one.